Judges chapter 6, and we are going to start at verse 11. And this is what it reads. It says, now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash, the Abizarite, while his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. It says, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonders, deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But he says, but now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. Verse 14, it says, and the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian do not I send you and he said to him please Lord how can I save Israel behold my clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my father's house and the Lord said to him but I will be with you I want to tell somebody that today I don't know where you are and I don't know your set of circumstances, but the Lord is with you. He said, I will be with you and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. The last verse, verse 17 says this, and he said to him, if now I have found favor in your eyes, then show me a sign that is you who speak with me. I wanna come from a topic this morning this is God. This is God. Can we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, in this moment, we are asking that you would open our hearts so that we can understand what your word is speaking to us today. Father, we, we pray in this moment that you would help us to be able to know that your word is not only for us to hear but it is to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path help us not to just be hearers of the word today but doers of your word in jesus name we say somebody say amen amen, amen. so i think this is important that we get today that this word that god is speaking is about us understanding the clarity thank you so much musicians about what God wants to speak in our hearts today. And I want to extract a theme from the message. I, I don't necessarily have a, a context that I want to dive and go line by line, but I, I want to extract the theme. And the theme that I believe that God is speaking today is that there is purpose inside of you. There is something inside of you, as you have been declaring, there is a, somebody say there's a seed. There's a seed inside of us that I believe that God is calling for, for us to be able to operate out of. But the problem is, is that oftentimes we're looking at our current state of where we are, and it's hard to see what the seed is already. We only see a seed in its current state. If you look at a seed in its current state, you will not see if you have an, 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 a seed of an orange tree. You, you will not see the orange tree. You just will see the seed. But the problem is, is that oftentimes we don't understand that the trees that will come out of it are already in the seed. It's just about the manifestation of the planting of the seed, about the watering of the seed, and about the growth of the seed. I want to tell you today that 
inside of you is potential beyond what you could ever imagine or think. There's something on the inside of you that God has placed that's greater than what you could ever imagine or think. The problem is, is that you're looking at it at its birth state instead of looking at it for what it already is. There is something great inside of you. Vision, there is something of a business there is something that is greater than where you are but the enemy will always give us eyes to only see what we have <laughs> and if you constantly look inside of your head and all you see is a seed that gives you an opportunity to plant you think about oftentimes how hard is it to plant to water, to be able to till the ground, to see the produce come from it. And God is saying today there's potential inside of you. There's something great manifested on the inside, but the problem that happens in that moment is that we see ourselves uh, and we say, you know what, because of my past, uh, there is no way that I have the ability to get ahead to see what God has already shown me. I'm just going to stay where I am. And many of us are finding ourselves that we've gotten comfortable with where we are. Because some of the goals that we have in our life, we've already achieved. But the problem is, is God never created you so that you could be able to only establish the goals in which your mind could think. The Bible says that he can do exceeding abundantly above all that you could either ask or what? Think according to the power that is at work with inside of us. Problem being uh, is we don't understand the power that's at work with inside of us. So we stay still with the goals that are attainable by our own power and might. But God says there's something I can do in you that no eye has seen uh, and no ear has heard uh, and no mind has conceived. Uh, I could do something in you but you've got to be able to see that there is an orange tree inside of you <laughs> sometimes we we don't understand what God is speaking because we haven't been asking him Lord what do you have for me we're in a very copying kind of environment and culture where we get our understanding and we get our cues from what other people are doing and 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 we're called to people because of how many likes they have and and how many followers they have and the problem is is that we don't see the potential inside of us we see it inside of everybody else <laughs> and I think the problem is is that like Gideon when the Lord is saying you are a mighty man and a mighty woman of valor, you look to the Lord and say, who, me? Anybody ever been there before? You looked at your life, you looked at your accomplishments, you've looked at the abilities that you have, you, you've, you've worked it out and, and you've measured yourself and you've said to yourself, I, I, I can do this much but I can't do that much because of my education or where I come from um, or my past or my broken hurts in my areas uh, or what I don't know and God is saying it has nothing to do uh, with what used to be, it's all about that there is a seed of potential on the inside of you can I tell somebody today stop counting yourself according to what you've already accomplished because it is only a small measure of who you are if you could count that God has placed something on the inside of you the Bible lets us know in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 it says we are a masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good works can you tell your neighbor real quick you're a masterpiece You're a masterpiece. You're unique. You're different. You talk different. You think differently. The way that you see things is different than everybody else. And God says, yep, that's exactly what I wanted. But the problem is, is that your uniqueness hasn't developed enough for people to be able to follow you like you see everybody else. So you compromise who you are so that you can get quicker results for people to be able to see 
who you are now instead of waiting for the correct season. Ecclesiastes tells me very quickly, there's a time and a season for all things. The problem is, uh, I don't like waiting. Uh, so when my season is supposed to come, the problem is I haven't done the work to build the potential to what God's called me to do. So I'm not ready for the blessing that he has for my life. So I've got to wait on the side until I become every version of who God's called me to be. The problem is, is I keep looking at other people as the source of where I get my identity from and God is saying it's not until you see the seed inside of you that I have the ability to make you all that I've called for you to be Gideon mighty man of valor the Lord is pleased with you how can the Lord be pleased with Gideon when yet he's punishing Israel Justice lets us know that it is a very clear time frame of where Israel sins, they pay for their sin, they cry out to God, and God sends them a deliverer. It's the whole context of what Judges is. It goes from person to person to person. And Gideon's not even the last one. We still got Samson and others to go. Here's what I want to let you know. Is that God has already set up a deliverer for your past. And the broken areas that you think you can't get out of, God has set up a plan that has greater potential than what you could ever see. He set up every resource you need. He set up every place for you to go. He set up every opportunity for you to fall in. But the problem is, is you don't understand that he already knew you. The Bible says before you were even in your mother's womb. Ah, creation lets me know that I'm made in the image and likeness of God, yet God planned for my mistakes so he knew that the path that he had for me, I would be broken and messed up and I wouldn't have the ability to carry it out the way that he wanted me to, but he said, don't you even worry about it. I've already prepared the way. Can you imagine that God would still use you knowing that you had mistakes, but he still would use you in the place because he had already prepared for your mistakes, so your purpose and path has not ended? It's only just begun. The Bible lets us know that he's calling Gideon, and he's saying to Gideon, I want to let you know, you're the deliverer. You're the one. You're the one I'm calling. You're the, you're the one that's going to change this set of circumstances. These Midianites that you're dealing with, the, these people that are overrunning you, and, and this world that is so corrupt that you're living in, you're called to do something about it. I want to let somebody know today is that you are the answer to the prayers that the world has been praying for, for people to be set free, delivered, and have hope. And God is waiting on you to free your own community instead of you waiting on God to do it miraculously. I want to tell you today, you are God's miracle for breakthrough. He says, Gideon, mighty man of valor, you're the one. Gideon says, hey, real quick, just trying to figure out, if I'm the one, then why are we going through? <laughs> you ever been there before? Somebody is trying to convince you of a place that, that you're called to be, and you're looking and saying, well, if I was the one, Lord, then why are we going through what we're going through? God is saying, I am plucking you out to make you specific to the situation I'm equipping. You. I'm giving you everything you need so that you can be who I've called you to be so that you can do what I've called you to do. The problem is, is that we don't get strong people out of soft moments. You want to be great without going through the fire. See, Midian was, Gideon was made because of Midian. He was made because of what the Midianites were doing. Even though he was hiding over near a wine present and he was finding himself just trying to keep his little, his, his, his little amount of grain to himself. Here's what I want to let you know. Some of the mess that you've been going through has been the very thing that's making you to become who God's called you to be. So instead of whining about it, let's stand up in it. Huh. 
One of the joys that Pastor Amby would know of pastoring is to be able to be everyone's therapist, psychologist, to talk to everybody about every situation, and them to look at you as if you had the answer. When you say to yourself, I can't even handle what I'm going through. And the idea is to believe is that if you can pray for me, that this too would pass. That it would make you greater and better. And that you could do some more amazing things. The thing of it is, is that God has put the pressure on you in this moment because he understands out of that pressure is going to come something great. And while you're praying it away and wishing it away, God is saying it's making you right now. But I need it to make you so that you can be tough enough that when they talk about you, you don't go back to the old you. Anybody know the old us? Come on, the old us. Y'all know the old us. The, the us that come up a little bit when traffic be acting a little crazy on 95. And, and you got up from Monday morning devotions and you and God were in worship. You cried. You snotted. All that fell on the floor. But you got in your car and God just got dismissed. You know what it looks like? You've been chasing them down 95, trying to make sure they can see you and get the look into your eyes like you disapproved of them. And you made sure, I just want to let you know, I saw you. But you prayed, spoke in tongues, prophesied. But as soon as you got in that car, You thought you had King Jesus, but you must have left him at home. Here's what I'm trying to tell you is that God is making you, and he's making you through the process so that you can understand there's something greater that's supposed to come out of who you are. And whatever God is doing in your life, he's not interested in sharing the glory. So he's using you. I got a little offended when I started realizing why God was using me. I was like, Lord, I don't deserve this. You know how you go into a posture of humility? I don't deserve this. God was like, yeah, you don't. I was like, oh, oh, we're we going to be that honest, huh, Lord? He's like, oh, you, you, you don't. He's like, I'm using you. Because when I use you, I qualify everybody else. See, some of us like to be the absolute smartest, the the absolute best at it. We we can't be second best to anything. I want to let you know I am the one that got the third place trophy and sat there with pride and said, look at me, I'm doing great. I want to let you know that I am one of the ones where they begin to start the participation certificate. How did you get a certificate? I just showed up. I don't know what happened. But some of us, if you understand your past, if you understand where you came from, if you understand where you used to be you're just in it with what a participation trophy I want to let you know the favor of God is all over your life Uh, I don't understand why I don't know why he did it I don't deserve it but it's all over my life Uh, I just want to tell you today when God's calling you out and he's saying mighty man and mighty woman of valor he's just saying you got favor all over your life no your degree is not adding up no your education is not adding up your finance this is not where they need to be but there's something about the favor of God (laughs) and the Lord is calling us today I want to let you know this is God what he's calling you to this is God I want to let you know that even though it seems so crazy that God will use you I want to let you know today this is God There's some things in your life right now, I promise you, that you've been ignoring the Holy Spirit. And for those of us that are far away from God, you're you're feeling this tugging. Why do I keep coming to this church? Because God is doing something on the inside of you that you don't even understand. But the Bible lets us know that we've been predestined and we've been called to do what God's calling us to do. You keep getting drawn to it, even though you like it, because it's who you truly are on the inside. Instead of you compromising and trying to fit in and look like somebody else, God is saying, I've already called you, mighty man 
man and mighty woman of valor. You have everything it takes, and the seed is inside of you. Can I share something with you real quick? There are some prayers that you don't even need to pray. Some of you are asking for generosity. Some of you are asking for grace. Some of you are asking, God, I need help in forgiving. It is not that you need God to give you forgiveness, to give you generosity, to give you grace. It's already inside of you. If I can let you know, God is done creating with you. He's not making new things. Why? Because he's a complete creator, which means what? He has already completed the work. So whatever it is you need, it's already on the inside of you. It just needs to be, somebody say, developed. I'm trying to get you to a place where your prayers go from whining to your prayers going to asking, God, develop who I am. Because whatever it is that I need to complete what God has called me to do is already inside of me. It just needs development. The Bible lets us know that the Lord didn't tell Gideon, okay, I'm going to give you some really good powers right now. He called Gideon because everything that Gideon was was already there. And it was already inside of him. It just needed to be Somebody say, call it forth. I want to call forth some things in your life today that have been sitting in lying dormant, that have been sitting at the place where you have just been finding yourself in a situation where you haven't been trusting God. I want to let you know today that you should not allow what's already inside of you to lie dormant. You need to pick up and begin to water the potential that's lying on the inside of you as God is already speaking right now to who you are to not stay where you are. I think it's important that you get this because if so, your prayer life would change. You would stop asking, Lord, Lord, what should I do? And you would start saying, God, what do I need to develop? Because for some of us, We haven't developed the potential of greatness that's inside of us. And the reason we're frustrated is we're frustrated with ourselves because we know we have more to give, but we don't have the exercise ability or discipline to give it. Some of us, the biggest problem that we're struggling with is that the greatness inside of you, which is too lazy to make great. So you'd rather stay by the wine press and complain and hide from what you think might be the mistake that God is asking you to step out on faith to be able to do. But you're saying to yourself, if I step out on faith, I might lose something. And if I lose something, I might be embarrassed. And God says you don't want it bad enough yet because you haven't made the decision that it doesn't matter if you're embarrassed. It doesn't matter if somebody talks about you. I've got to develop the seed that's on the inside of me. Some of you are greater than what you could ever imagine or think. You have seen yourself in vision do great things. It is just your flesh and it is what? Your soul that has been dominating the process of the way that you have been thinking. What is the soul comprised of? It is the mind, will, and emotions. You are controlled by your mind, your will, and your emotions. And your body is following suit. And your spirit is lying dormant. I'm here today to let somebody know that God is calling forth the spirit on the inside of you to rise above everything else uh, to speak to the soul and the body and to say get up there's more for us to do the Lord wasn't speaking to Gideon's flesh he was speaking to what was inside of him mighty man of valor you can't find that anywhere he was speaking to the spirit why because God was calling forth what already was He didn't create it in that moment. He was calling it forth already. Here's what I want to know. What barriers do you have that God is trying to call forth something that you won't allow it to move forward? Because if so, I want to let you know today, it's God that's calling you. Tell your neighbor real quick, God's calling you. They didn't believe you. Tell somebody else on the other side, God's calling you. Here's why I... I want to tell you today, God's calling you because you don't believe it because if you believed it, you would act on it. 
The Bible says faith without works is dead. You ever heard somebody say you got a lot of mouth service? You talk a lot, but you don't do much. You don't operate. You don't, you don't move out of your belief and your conviction of what God is saying over your life because if you believed it, then you would move. So tell somebody else your third choice. Look at your third choice and say, I'm sorry, you're my third choice. But the first two didn't work out. God's calling you. He's calling you. I want to tell somebody today, he's calling you. You said, Pastor, time is over. Here's what I want to let you know. It doesn't matter that you retired from a job. You haven't retired from your calling. God's calling you. And if God's calling you, you must answer. What is he calling you to? That you have stifled him on and said, mm, that's not me. I don't do that. That's them. You know, I'm a, I love this right now. This is, the, this is the number one key to get you out of anything. You know, I'm not really an extrovert. You know, I don't really do people. So you, you don't do other humans. You just do you by yourself. And these are the excuses that the enemy has been so crafty at depositing in our minds and our wills and our emotions that our soul reigns over what the spirit commands. And so we follow according to our will, not what God says. So the Holy Spirit lies dormant for the areas of our life that we're supposed to operate by faith. But I can't operate by faith if my soul and my body are in charge because my soul and my body don't connect with faith, only my spirit does. And if my spirit connects with faith, then it means the Holy Spirit is speaking into me. For 1 Corinthians lets me know that only the spirit knows the mind of God. And if the spirit knows the mind of God, then the only way I know what God has called me to be and who he's created me to be is to know God's mind. Well, in order for me to know God's mind, it means I must seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the Bible says, and all other things will be added unto you. Problem is, I'm a Christian that feels and doesn't believe. And when I feel and don't believe, I don't operate in faith. And the problem with that is, if the Bible says, it is only by faith that we can please the Lord. Well, if I'm not pleasing the Lord, it means I'm operating in my own self and my own flesh. And while I look good on the outside, I'm forever perishing on the inside. The Bible says we were once dead in our trespasses and sins, yet. God made us alive through Jesus Christ. Can we have a praise break moment right now that we've been made alive in Jesus Christ? Now, for those of you that are alive, I saw you, I watched you, the camera saw you and watched you. For those of you that didn't stand up, you're not alive. Nope, I can't do that. Only Jesus can do that. But what I want to tell you is when you understand how alive you become, you start to see the potential of what God can do in your life. This is God. Gideon, fearful, underdeveloped in faith because he didn't know what was going to happen. He was brave, but he was fearful. You can be brave and yet scared. The Bible lets us know that Gideon starts getting bold. Here, here's where I think we, we just, if you're made alive, I, I think you should start just getting bold with God. And I, and I think you should really Start saying, God, what is it that you've called me to do? What, what have you established in my life for me to do? And God is speaking to you right now. I can tell you God is speaking to you. Some of you look angry at me. Don't trigger it. Don't bring it up. Don't make me be accountable to me. 
Because the lack of accountability to yourself is what's giving you the permission to push your purpose to the side while you begin to dive and accelerate after the very perishable things of this life. And you put your hope in the pieces of this life, cars, homes, because you feel the value of everyone else's opinion matters outside of God's. And if you really cared about what God thought, you would start asking God, what does it look like to be what he created you to be? But the scary part of what God has created you to be may not look like what you are. Which means you could possibly need to change as amazing as you think you are. God is saying if you could change, you could finally be happy. And you wouldn't have to posture it on the outside. Let me get to what I'm supposed to get to. Because if I go down that road, then that's one of those roads you don't come back from. So I'm going to stay where I'm supposed to be. This is God. Here how, here's how you understand. I want you to write this down, that you know God is speaking to you. Point number one, God identifies. God identifies. What, Pastor, what are you saying when you're saying God identifies? The Lord comes in and says, listen, this is me. I'm identifying you that what I have on the inside of you, I've called you to, and I've called you to something great. I want to let you know, getting you are a mighty man of valor. God is calling and he's identifying you. The question today is what has God said over your life that you've ignored? God's identified you. What has he identified you as? What has he called you as? Some of you only identify by your career because it gives you the pleasure of feeling accomplished even though you feel disconnected with what it does. Some of you have postured yourself totally after your identity. How you doing, John? It's Dr. <laughs> Dr. John. Oh, I'm sorry. Sad part about it is, is Dr. John is already mad because his identity is in something that can be taken away. And the problem is, is God will never identify you by a position that can be ended by man. <laughs> if you can get fired from it, that's not who you are. You might be a doctor, but you ain't done nothing doctorish in a long time. <laughs> but because the context is, is the world has put the importance on what you do. The problem is what you do will change. The purpose of who you are will never change. That's why knowing who you are is more important than what you do. Because the greatness of who you are will always show up in what you do. I was a leader. I, I'm, I was a leader when I was young in, in church. I, I did youth ministry. And I'll never forget, you know, just leadership was just, you know, just in me. Either that or I just like telling people what to do. I'm not sure. I can't spiritually define it back then. But I'm just talking about where I am now. I found myself in a place where... Seemingly everywhere I would go, there would be a leadership moment. I got a job. Um, I, had, I had to get this job. Y'all know that job that you got to get? You don't want to get, but you got to get when you're young. Y'all know that one? You know that job? Like, somebody's like, you need to get a job. <laughs> it's the job after that statement, you know? You need to get a job. You'd be like, oh, oh, okay. So I get that job, that, which means I don't know what I'm doing. I just signed up because they hired you. Y'all know that job. What do you do? I'm a special analyst for the bionic research lab. What do you do? I just file papers. I, I really don't know what I'm doing. I've got like seven titles on my name, but I, you, honestly, I just file papers and, you know, and I keep the coffee warm. 
I got a job, and I got this job, and I was working with people with developmental disabilities, and as I was working with them, I, I, I got into the space where uh, I, I, I started getting in that job and, and moving up in leadership, and, and I got to the place where they were about to put me over a full facility, over 120 adults dealing with developmental disabilities. About to get a good salary. I'm walking down the hallway. I literally can imagine it. And the Lord says, it's time for you to resign. I said, Lord, I just bought a car. <laughs> I was like, Gideon, wait, before we go there, what about this car? Like, I got some stuff to look at. Lord says, it's time for you to resign. I put my resignation in. The next day, the CEO of the company comes in and says to me, what is it going to take? to keep you here. Give me the number, and we'll do it. You know how you got to go back to the Lord? Okay, so <laughs> you hold one second. I'll be right back. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. He said to me, what is it going to take? I said, the problem is, is that I didn't resign on my own. This was a God thing. He said, well, whatever you're going to do, you're going to be successful at it. God bless you. You know, see you. I left that job. Didn't have a job after it. Doesn't really make sense when God works in your life the way he does. Because if you're like me, you're a little bit of a control freak, and you want God to tell you what's happening so the next step makes sense. You know what I mean? Because we don't like faith. That's crazy. <laughs> wants to do this whole faith thing. Come on, God, give me the plan, and then I'll move with the plan. So I asked God, what's, you know, what's the plan? God's quiet. Oh, oh, you, you just, you going to give directions and then not pick up. Because when you make a God move, you feel really spiritual. Can I be on? Can, can we be honest? Carol, I walked out on faith. <laughs> what you doing next? Dad, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's what happened. I, I walked out. My mother said, so what's next? I said, well, we'll look in the job section and see. I go into the job section and I look. I can't get anything, y'all. And I, I find a security thing. You sell security alarms. What in the world? I go from about to be a director, a head over a whole organization to I'm now selling alarm systems. Here's the problem. When you're great and God has spoken greatness over you, it doesn't matter what you do. You're always great. So I started selling alarm systems. Well, the first person who sells the most becomes the regional director. Well, guess who sold the most? They say, awesome. We're setting up your office in Maryland. Guess what God says? Time to go. Oh, come, oh, come on. I leave the job. Ask the Lord again, what am I supposed to do now? My sister gets me a job at Johns Hopkins. Okay, 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 I see this. Yeah, we got levels now, we got levels. I got levels, I can, I can do this. I get on, I'm ready. It's an 11 to seven, 11 at night, seven in the morning. Yeah, 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 exactly. I don't like none of God's plan. I'm gonna be straight up with you, none of it. I get it, I work from 11 to 12, I find a nice place to rest. <laughs> My supervisor comes and taps me. Hey, you're supposed to be working. I said, okay. I went two weeks. Seven o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. I said, Marcus, I want to let you know, this position is not going to work out for you. I said, it took y'all this long? <laughs> I'm surprised. That you went this long with me. I get fired. Position opens up at our church as an administrator, 2008. 
I work for my mom as she's pastoring. God was setting everything up from the beginning. 2014, we reestablish a brand new church called The Mix. I go into pastoring. Here's what I want to let you know. I never wanted to do this. It was never a part of the plan. I was supposed to be a musician on tour. The Lord spoke to me while I was playing in the club. (laughs) Jesus. And he said, is this it? In the middle of a solo. I thought he was talking about the solo at first. I was like, this this is really aggressive, Lord. I can do better. But he was saying there was something different for my life. Scripture says in Romans chapter 8, verse 30, it says, And those in whom he predestined, he also called. And those in whom he called, he also justified, declared free of the guilt of sin. And those in whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity. God is identifying you today, and you can't get away from your calling no matter what your job is. He's calling you. The second thing that God does when this is God is God speaks. He speaks and he's still speaking. Anyone that is telling you that God is not speaking doesn't understand relationship. Because there's no way to build relationship if God isn't talking. So it means he's got to be speaking. Bible lets us know in Genesis, he spoke. And when he ended in Revelation, he was still talking to John. God is speaking today. And I want to let you know, he is speaking to us. Scripture lets us know in John chapter 10, verse 27, he says, The sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. How do I hear the voice of God? It's an innate part of what's created in you when you're connected to the Father. You want to go to YouTube and probably be like, well, how do you hear the voice of God? Here's what I'm going to say. Build relationship with them. Because anyone you want to hear from, you talk to. How's your relationship with God? How's your time with the Father? Because he wants to speak, for the Bible says he wants to reveal those things which concern us, but there has to be someone asking. The Bible says you ask, you shall what? Receive it. You seek, you'll find. If you knock, it'll be open. But guess who it's on? Somebody say it's on me. God is speaking, but only sheep who know the shepherd follow. Just ask your neighbor real quick. Are you a sheep? You, are, you, are, you, are you hearing God speak? It's the Holy Spirit staring in you so that you can know what the Lord is speaking in your life. And our last point. God confirms. You don't have to be afraid today that you have got to be so good that when God speaks after he's identified you, that he won't confirm. The Bible says, Gideon said, listen, Lord, real quick, so that I know it's you, stay right here and I'll be right back. And the Bible says in verse 17, He said, I'll I'll stay right here. I'll be right here. Judges chapter 16, verse 17 through 18 says, and he said to him, if I now have found favor in your eyes, then show me a sign that it's you who speak with me. 
He said, please do not depart from here until I come to you and bring out my present and set it before you. And here's what the angel of the Lord said. He said, I will stay until you return. You go after God and say, Lord, if this is you, Bible says what? Bid me to come, as Peter said. Tell me this is you in this moment. Let me know you're calling after me today. I want to tell somebody in here, this is God today. He's speaking. He's staring. He is urging. He is pushing you because he wants to see the greatness and the seed come out from you. I would love to pray today. But my prayer isn't that you would just be in a place where you would just hear what God is saying. But the Bible says we don't just want to be hearers. But we want to be doers. I would not that you would come another Sunday hearing the word of God and yet not changing where you're going. Today, God is calling you forth. He's saying this is the time. This is the moment. This is the opportunity for the seed that I have planted inside of you to change the very nature of who you are. Can I pray over you today? I want to pray in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're declaring and we're decreeing in this place that the seed that you have set inside of every individual that is hearing this word at this moment, God, that that seed not fall on stony ground, but the seed will fall into good soil so that life change would take place. Father, we don't want to be carbon copies. We don't want to be famous. We just want your will to be done in our lives. Identify yourself with us. Not because we can't trust you. Because we don't want to make the wrong decision. We want to follow you. To know that your word is always true. And it never fails. We love you. We honor you. And we thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, we declare. Somebody say amen. Can you help me celebrate God in this place? God bless you.